we had several people that looked at it and we had one offer that we were about to accept on March 2nd. And based on the fact that we were going to, to accept that offer, I had a couple of windows that had some small chips in it. So I was gonna go ahead and fix that. So that would not be a deterrent to executing the sale. So on March 2nd, I sent a handyman over to repair those windows. At 7 a.m. that morning, after he had picked up the key, he gives me a rather panicked phone call and said, Patty, there is a mother pit bull with 10 to 14 babies sleeping on the front porch and I can't go in the house. Well, I had no idea where there, why there might be a dog on my house for sale. So I drove over there and sure enough, there was a dog with, with babies. And at that point, I was just incredibly puzzled. Uh, and so I started to open the back door with my key. And at that point it dawned on me that the house could have people in it and that I might place myself in danger if I simply walked into the house. So instead of opening the back door, I dialed 911 and had a conversation with the police and explained the situation. As I was walking around to the front of the house to wait for the police, I think the tenants must have heard my voice, the squatters rather, must have heard my voice and they came out. And it was two young women who told me that they had a lease to live there. And very quickly, she pulled up the lease on her phone, shows it to me. It was unsigned as I could see it. And it was issued by a person whom I didn't know. And so I told her, I said, I'm really sorry to tell you this, but this house is not for rent. This person has no affiliation with me or my business partner, the owner of the home. And I'm really sorry, I think you must have been scammed. And she told me then and showed me a receipt that they had paid $3,100 in first month rent, uh, pet fee and a deposit. And then she indicated that it was for rent on Zillow. Well, I own the listing on Zillow. And so it was, I knew that it was listed for sale and had anything been altered on that, you'll get an email from Zillow saying that your listing's been altered. I had not received anything like that. I then looked it up on Zillow and it was not for rent. So I'm beginning to get a little bit suspicious, but we're waiting on the police officer. And he indicated that he was pretty sure that this young woman was a serial squatter because she had just been evicted from another house not very far away, three or four blocks away in the past month. She had moved into that house in December and had recently been evicted. So at that point in time, we knew that this was probably a a scam that these young women run and they go from one home to another, but they know the law so well, they know that I have absolutely no right to remove them until it meanders through the civil court system. But that second day I drove by and I saw that the front door was open. And so I stopped, I was alone and I walked up to the sunroom porch and the dogs were gone. So I was feeling rather hopeful because that front door was three quarters of the way open. So I knocked, I announced my presence in keeping with the fact that they have a right to privacy. And then I entered the sunroom porch and knocked on the front door as well and announced my presence. At that point in time, when I looked into the front door, I see that they're still there. I had pepper spray in my hand. They rushed to the front door and it immediate, immediately escalated. You don't have every right to be in the house I at do, all. Ma you do not. I, when you do not, because according to my lease, me and my girlfriend yeah. owns the house. So I don't know what you need to take up with Wait, the police. What? You don't what, own the whatever house. the case may be. I own the house. But yeah. Okay. No. No. If you touch, no. I'm not touching you. My I'm trying to you are touching, touching me, no, and this okay. lady is I'm touching me. No, we're blocking you from no, in the house. You are. God damn it. And then they threw me out onto the porch and I fell out onto the sunroom porch. 
Uh, I called the police. Uh, the police told me that I had absolutely no right to privacy, that they had, if they wanted to, they could have arrested me for that action. Another altercation, we were driving by at night, they threw a brick at my car and damaged it. And we had the window part way down and they threw human feces into the car. Of course, the case went our way, but it didn't go our way until 34 days later. And I had to hire an attorney that cost me about $5,500 in attorney's fees, as well as court filing fees. And meanwhile, the squatters are living in the house and I have absolutely no right to go into this house because these squatters have the expectation of privacy. Even though the law knows that they're squatters, I know that they're squatters and they know they're squatters. They did $38,000 worth of damage to the inside of the home purely out of spite and anger. They uh, destroyed walls and cabinets. They stole our washer dryer. They uh, placed feces on the carpet and other places. Um, they left food. They threw eggs on the walls and the, the flooring. To add insult to injury, we lost that offer, of course, uh, that had been made on the home. So it has cost us an enormous amount of money and time and emotional energy. Uh, I, I am concerned from a financial standpoint as well. These homes that we own a few of them, and this is my retirement. Uh, and so uh, any sort of, of income that I was trusting to live off of for this year is diminished because of this act of, of stealing. That's essentially what they've done. They've stolen my home from me for a period of time. And then they escalated it by doing almost $40,000 worth of damage. It is now my decision to get rid of all of my uh, rental properties and I will have to figure another way out to subsidize my retirement. This is people that are taking advantage of open homes and breaking in and using it for their own living. Governor DeSantis needs to have a special ruling for someone that breaks into a home, whether they have a fraudulent lease or they've simply broken in with no paperwork. And there needs to be a far more expedited way that the court system can look at the situation and declare quickly within a couple of days, whether or not that is a legitimate individual in that house who might've been defrauded by a, a, a landlord, a sneaky landlord, or if in fact it's the landlord that is being defrauded by a squatter. There must be a differentiation between squatters and tenants and a more expedited way to determine if someone has entered your house, if they are a legal tenant.